The Evolution of Politics Laws for Ruling Rulers rule by laws. Laws are written, interpreted, and enforced by governments. Governments are either selected by a few, as in monarchies and dictatorships, or elected by the majority, as in democratic constitutions and parliamentary systems. In monarchies, the king or queen is appointed by right of birth. In dictatorships, the dictator is self-appointed by right of fight and might. In America, the rule of the land is dictated by elected executive and legislative branches of the government and the president has veto powers. The legislative branch, called Congress, makes laws. It has two houses, the House of Senate with a hundred elected senators, two from each state who serve for six years, and the House of Representatives with 435 elected representatives representing various districts for two years. The Congress makes federal law, declares war, approves treaties, delegates funds, and can remove members of the government, including the president, by impeachment. The executive branch enforces laws that the national courts of justice interpret. It is headed by the president, elected by an electoral college, who are in turn elected by the citizens. The president serves four years and can serve only two times in a row. He is the commander-in-chief of the military, can veto legislative bills before they become law, and appoints, with the approval of the Senate, the Cabinet, and other officers who administer laws and policies. In Switzerland, the rule of the land is dictated by elected executive and legislative branches, and the citizens have veto power using plebiscites and initiatives. The legislative branch has two houses and they make the laws. The Senate, Standrat, with 46 elected senators, two from each canton who serve for four years, and the House of Representatives called the Nationalrat with 200 elected representatives representing various districts. The Senate acts like the board of directors of a corporation, while the parliament acts like its shareholders. The executive branch, called the Federal Council, or Bundesrat, enforces laws that the national courts of justice interpret by secretive vote. It proposes and prepares draft laws and policies for the legislative branch to implement. It is headed by the president, who is the unofficial head of the state. The president serves for one year on a rotational basis and is chosen from the seven members of the federal council who are elected for four years by the parliament. Members of the parliament are in turn elected by the citizens. In England, a constitutional monarchy, or in other democratic countries in the world, authority is vested in the parliament which is elected by the citizens with the monarch, if there is one, holding symbolic veto powers. The legislative branch has two houses and makes laws. The House of Lords, or Upper House, with over 800 selected lords recommended by the Church of England and appointed by the monarch or the Prime Minister for life. And the House of Commons, or Lower House, with 650 elected members representing districts for four years. The executive branch is symbolically headed by the monarch who is the head of state, 
with a right to veto. But in reality, the Prime Minister and his cabinet members, called ministers, form the functioning executive branch and are selected by the parliament, which in turn are elected by the citizens. They get their democratic legitimacy from the parliament and they are accountable and interwined with them. This greatly facilitates and speeds up the passing of laws. Laws of ruling. Politics, the art of ruling, is never free of corruption because power inherently corrupts. This is because getting to a level of power, if you are serious about it, requires cheating. You must cheat as much as you can get away with because you are not alone in trying to get up the ladder to power. All your competitors cheat. Some of them even punch and steal openly just to get a short-term competitive edge on you. Getting up there is a dirty game and you have to play dirty to win. If that greatly offends your morals, the best you can do for your peace of mind is to convince yourself that once you are in power, you will outlaw cheating. Then you become a dictator. To stay in power as a dictator, you have to ruthlessly defend your hard earned position from all the lame competitors who are dying to kill you. The best you can do is to recruit a few to scare the rest enough to leave you alone. No matter what your intentions were at the beginning, once you become the dictator of a nation of people, you will end up being corrupt. This law of politics, of ruling and being ruled, parallels the law of nature where the strongest heads the herd. Fortunately, there's one exception to this law. The exception in nature is called a family. The exception in politics is called a benign monarchy. A loving monarch ensures the nation's health and happiness, just like loving parents raise healthy and happy families. Over many thousands of years, families slowly grew into villages and communities, and then gradually into towns and cities. Over many centuries, cities grew into civilizations. When they got too big, they broke. Just like the breakdown of mountains when they get too big, or families when they get too modern, the monarchies started to degenerate. From being selfish, and arrogant leaders hiding from rebels to being vain and incompetent superstars hiding from paparazzi. While the monarchies were becoming dysfunctional, the dictators replacing them evolved the sophistication seen in the many Hitlers and Saddam types that emerged. Many dictators started out as Robin Hoods and ended up to be Gaddafi's. Wearing the cloak of democracy and the face of diplomacy, they used the media, the schools, and pieces of paper with their pictures on it to sell everybody freedoms that were only experienced by the wealthy privileged. They called themselves capitalists, and like collectors, they accumulated money they called capital. The media they used were the books, magazines, newspapers, and radio and television, and the internet. Eventually, the media became the message as there was only one message that could be clearly seen and heard, the message to consume. Indoctrination centers called schools were organized. Starting at an early age with kindergartens, children were removed from the tutelage and sanctity of families 
and from the exploitation of factories. They were cultivated under a program of brainwashing called education, where they were programmed and trained to be obedient and skilled adult workers and brainwashed to be good consumers. Chains and whips were replaced by money and the freedoms it promised to all Christians, Muslims and Jews as long as they were freedom-loving capitalist consumers competing with their competitors to keep the wheels of profit turning. Some dictators sang a different message. The message to cooperate and produce instead of to compete and consume. Those Robin Hood dictators took everything away from the few who had much in order to distribute it evenly to the many who had less. Most of them spent so much effort confiscating this wealth that they did not have any energy left to distribute it. They usually ended up keeping most of the booty for themselves, their family, and their comrades. They called themselves communists. Some people got very upset to see their country being exploited by both the capitalists and the communists and were committed to save their nation from both elements. They were called fascists. Fascists get very upset when they see their nation fail and fall. They welcome a strong dictator to save them they are prepared to sacrifice some of their personal freedoms and profits for the benefit of their country. They violently oppose anything that threatens their nation's security, especially any opposition to their dictator who is regarded to be the nation's savior. Some people got very upset to see their religion being exploited by capitalists, communists, fascists, and pagans and they were committed to save the world from all of them. They were called religious fundamentalists. Religious fundamentalists believe that all pagans need saving and they welcome a strong leader that can effectively sell their religion. They oppose anything that threatens their security to practice their rituals. They promote opposition to any opposing beliefs which they regard as dangerous and sinful. They believe in their God so much that they are willing to kill for him. Capitalism proved to be very profitable for some people. They got so prosperous that they abandoned their nation, expanded and spread out worldwide to make even more profit. They were called multinational corporations and their citizens were called the consumers and the shareholders. Consumers get very upset when they see the price of their products increase. Shareholders get very upset when they see the price and demand for their stocks fall. They demand a strong leader called the president or the CEO to grow the company and generate profits at any cost. Companies are prepared to lie and steal from their competitors who they regard as deadly enemies in their beat or be beaten and eat or be eaten world.